charging. All right. Hey, success. Uh, so welcome. Uh, this is uh, uh, Aerial Images to Maps, uh, or a technology called Advances that we've been doing with uh, Open Drum Map. Uh, I'm Piero Tofanin. I'm one of the co-founders and uh, the lead maintainer on the Open Drum Map project. Um, by a quick raise of hands, who has used Open Drum Map before? All right, all right. So that's uh, that's more than last time. So that's uh, <laughs> that's very good. Uh, so. Uh, a quick introduction for those that have not used or seen Open Drum Map before. Uh, it's Open Drum Map. Uh, it is open, as in uh, free and open source. Uh, it is. Uh, it has to do with drones, although it is not its only use case. Uh, you can, in fact, use uh, virtually any camera that you'd like uh, to use it, including your phones and uh, GoPros and uh, other cameras. Uh, and it does create maps. And by maps, we uh, mostly uh, mean uh, true art photos, but. Uh, uh, that is not all it does, and uh, I sometimes like to uh, peek around Twitter to see what people uh, tell about Open Drone Map, and apparently it's also the best thing to happen to UAVs since drone UAVs. Uh, I didn't say that. Uh, one of you did. Uh, <laughs> so, Open Drone Map is uh, not a single project. Uh, it is actually an ecosystem of tools. Uh, it is free and open source. Uh, it is currently, it has been actively developed for the last uh, eight years. Uh, it has uh, uh, excellent support, even uh, commercially supported. Uh, it is uh, well documented, uh, and uh, it's comparable uh, as of late, uh, and sometimes even better than proprietary alternatives. Uh, we pride ourselves in having uh, a very friendly community. Uh, we put a lot of uh, effort to build that. And uh, if you are new to the software and you just want to uh, get a peek and get started, uh, opendrumup.org uh, is uh, all that you need to access to get a glimpse uh, into uh, the ecosystem. Uh, the main tool that we develop is a uh, fully automated processing pipeline that takes uh, uh, raw images, like the ones that come out of uh, drones or uh, your phone also. Uh, provided that those pictures have sufficient overlap, uh, we are able to do a process that I will quickly uh, make an overview of. And uh, it's able to generate uh, several different assets, which are of uh, much interest to geographers and surveyors and many other industries. Uh, those include orthophotos, uh, elevation models, point clouds, and uh, uh, textured uh, 3D meshes. Uh, some of the examples that you can find uh, from uh, people around the world using Open Draw Map include uh, uh, mapping uh, longhorn uh, cattle uh, areas to see where uh, uh, they're moving, or uh, making uh, uh, digital surface models of uh, archaeological, archaeological sites. Uh, it includes uh, the ability to make uh, measurements on uh, 3D point clouds, uh, computing uh, uh, plant health map indices. Uh, all of this is done through the software, uh, through a GUI that we've created for the software. So uh, all of these screenshots are directly from the software that you can download uh, uh, from Open Drone Map. Uh, you can also process very large data sets. Uh, in fact, we are probably one of the softwares that can process the most images, uh, provided you have the right setup. Uh, and there's a screenshot there of uh, this awesome picture I found on Twitter uh, that uh, they processed uh, some 1.4 billion uh, point clouds organized in a COPSI format, and they opened it and uh, recorded a video straight uh, out of QGIS, which is fantastic. Uh, and you can also use it for a less, uh, um, how did you say it? Uh, <laughs> more, more fun projects. Uh, for example, you can shrink your house uh, and 3D print it <laughs> and hold it in your hand, and that's kind of cool. So you can do that also with uh, Open Draw Map. Um, you can also create uh, very cool isometric uh, designs uh, if you open your models in Blender and uh, do some uh, cleaning uh, to make it look pretty. So that's also kind of cool. Uh, to get started, you just need a drone. Uh, you capture some images. If you don't have a drone, uh, you can use your phone. If you don't want to use your phone, we also have test data you can just uh, throw into the software to try it out. Uh, to download the software, uh, there are simple instructions that you can find in the documentation. Uh, you can also help fund the development. We have a, a small installer that people can uh, purchase, and that helps you get up and running even faster. Uh, so that's also an option. Uh, once you've uh, selected your images and tossed them into Open Drum Map, uh, you just need to wait uh, or go get a coffee, and uh, you should be up and running. Uh, this is a bit uh, what the interface uh, for the program looks like. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, there's a big button. Uh, you can't miss it. Uh, it says select images. It's quite uh, simple. You select uh, all the images, 
uh, you review your information, uh, you can choose whether you want to process uh, your data locally or you want to send it to, say, one of your other computers that maybe it's uh, 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 set up in the cloud. Uh, you can do that also, so you can distribute your tasks across uh, multiple machines. Uh, after you're done uh, choosing your options, uh, you can uh, press review and start processing. Uh, the process uh, will take a bit, depending on how many images you have. Uh, we have to be realistic. If you're trying to process uh, uh, 10,000 images, uh, it might take a while. And by a while, I mean maybe a day. Uh, so if you try to process uh, a more reasonable amount, which you can usually do, uh, you can probably process it in uh, maybe a few hours. Uh, if you have 18 images like here, it'll probably process in a few minutes. So it, the time to require to process increases uh, linearly, roughly, with the number of images. Once uh, you are done processing, you will be presented with uh, the results. Uh, through the interface, you can explore uh, your Earth photos. Uh, you can look at your plant health. You can compute uh, uh, various plant health algorithms. Uh, something that is new that I want to mention very briefly is we've added this very nice uh, export features directly onto the map. It's a what you see is what you get export. Uh, so if you change uh, the sliders uh, around uh, your map and you want to exactly print out a copy of that GeoTIFF in RGB or maybe you want to export it in uh, JPEG, you can do that now. So uh, that's very helpful for getting uh, uh, information to stakeholders and other people that might be interested in the result uh, without having to uh, install other software. Uh, you can also check out your uh, surface model and finally uh, your uh, 3D models uh, from which you can make uh, all sorts of measurements and, uh, uh, and annotations. Uh, so very briefly, <laughs> I really worked hard on this slide because uh, my first attempt was very long. <laughs> so I started deleting as many things that I could to really simplify it. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, what we do is we take images and we run them through a process called structure from motion. Uh, from there, we are able to estimate the original camera poses of, the, uh, of where the pictures were taken. Uh, we further then pass all that information into another process uh, called the multi-view stereo. Uh, this gives us uh, a densified point cloud. From there, we apply uh, algorithms for meshing, texturing, and we obtain a textured mesh. Uh, and finally, we take a, a picture from above, uh, and that gives us uh, our uh, final Earth photo. Uh, plus all the rest, <laughs> which uh, gives us the georeferencing and the ground control points and the rolling shutter correction. And, uh, but in a nutshell, this is what it does. And it's uh, uh, quite uh, fascinating and magical uh, if you've never uh, seen it. So uh, what is new about Open Drum Map that we've added in the past few years or since last time, since last time that we've uh, been at a Phosphor G event? Uh, the biggest thing that we've done is probably the most Im impactful because we've finally been able to get Open Drum Map to be a first-class citizen on Windows. Uh, it used to be the case that you need to use uh, another program called Docker to get it up and running. Uh, that is no longer the case. You can run Open Drum Map fully natively on Windows uh, with the GPU acceleration and all the goodies uh, without having to uh, use Docker. And uh, it works uh, really, really well. Uh, you can download the, the ODM program directly from GitHub. Uh, you just head to the releases page, and we have uh, set up the installers uh, to download uh, directly from there. Uh, we've also made uh, major efforts to speed up the pipeline in general. Uh, so if you've tried Open Drum Map, uh, say, two or three years ago, and uh, uh, you try it today, uh, you will likely notice a very uh, <laughs> a shortening of time in the processing. Uh, and one of the things that contributed to this uh, massive acceleration uh, has been uh, the introduction of GPU acceleration. Uh, if you have an NVIDIA card, you can now use that to speed up several steps uh, in the processing pipeline. Uh, it is enabled on default by Windows, so you don't have to configure anything. It will just work. Uh, TM, <laughs> trademark. <laughs> uh, if you're on Linux, uh, yeah, you simply need to use uh, a different Docker image. Uh, the default one will only have the CPU stuff. Uh, to get the GPU stuff, you need to use a different tag. Uh, but it's pretty uh, straightforward there as well. Uh, another big thing that we've added uh, in, the, uh, um, in the topic of speeding things up is we've added uh, planar reconstructions. Uh, if you have uh, a data set that has been captured on a flat terrain, uh, for example, anybody that does things uh, and surveyings in agriculture, uh, this is typically the case. Uh, and uh, you've flown your drone at a fixed altitude, which is also frequently the case, and you've taken nadir shots, meaning uh, you took all of your pictures looking straight down, which is also frequently the case, uh, you can uh, turn on a new option called uh, SFM Algorithm Planar, 
And uh, this new mode uh, will allow you to get reconstruction results uh, much, much faster because it has been uh, massively uh, paralyzed. Uh, so <laughs> if that is your case, definitely check it out if you haven't. Uh, other things that we've done is uh, we now create a much denser and accurate point clouds. Uh, this is uh, mostly uh, credit to the uh, people at uh, OpenMVS, uh, which our project relies on. And uh, it is currently uh, the best uh, verifiable uh, score on one of the uh, key benchmarks for uh, uh, structure from motion uh, benchmarks. So um, very, very cool uh, in that regard. Uh, and you also have a new option called uh, PC Geometric. Turning it on will definitely improve uh, all of your uh, reconstructions that, that involve the presence of buildings, so man-made structures. Uh, it will really fine-tune and sharpen the point cloud edges uh, to show those uh, 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 geometries. Uh, and the people noticed. Uh, <laughs> it's not just you, class. <laughs> I think it's everyone. Uh, we've added the uh, state-of-the-art uh, uh, support for uh, multispectral images. Uh, we have uh, automatic band alignment. Uh, we've uh, started adding support uh, for several camera vendors and sensors. Uh, Open Draw Map will take care of sorting out all of the file mess that is a multispectral data collection. Uh, you take all of your images and you toss them into the software. The software will figure it out how to give you a single orthophoto multiband uh, that is giving you uh, reflectance values. Uh, sorry, uh, radiance values. Uh, so uh, it also is able to ingest uh, a mix of RGB and TIFFs, even with redundancy. So if you have RGBs and you have uh, uh, individual R, G, and B bands in form of TIFFs, uh, Open Draw Map will sort it all out and still give you a good result. Uh, you can turn on and off uh, the uh, um, radiometric calibration by uh, specifying uh, the radiometric calibration flag. We also have a thermal support, so if one of your uh, multispectral bands includes uh, thermal bands, uh, we will also process those. Uh, the visualization of the thermal information is still experimental, but it is available. It's kind of hidden. We get a lot of requests about that, and we need to, we will improve it. Uh, you currently access it by going in the uh, plant health tab of the GUI. So it's not really uh, um, straightforward, uh, but it's there if you go into plant health uh, and plant health and you look for the thermal band, uh, you will find there a way to visualize it. Uh, we've added support for uh, cloud-optimized point clouds. If you've seen uh, Howard Butler's uh, talk yesterday, uh, this is uh, uh, an amazing uh, thing for uh, point clouds in general. Uh, if you don't know about COPSI, go check it out. Uh, this is something that we have enabled in Open Draw Map if you pass uh, an additional option while you process your data. It will just generate the file for you and then you can use it with all of your tools that have uh, uh, COPSI support. We've also added support for uh, uh, generating a uh, OGC 3D tiles. Uh, this is not something that we do uh, with, a, uh, um, with, with a cloud service, uh, whether proprietary or open. This is all done offline by Open Draw Map, uh, and you can generate them automatically, both for the 3D meshes and point clouds by enabling a flag. Uh, and the, the, the meshes are not just the normal meshes wrapped into 3D tiles, these are actually uh, hierarchical level of detail meshes that will stream efficiently even if your model is really, really large. And it's also, as a bonus, uh, available as a standalone module. So you can go on GitHub in the obj to tiles repository and you'll be able to, uh, to download it and use it without the rest. Uh, we've added add, uh, support for uh, the ARM64 platform. This means that you can use uh, Open Draw Map on your uh, Apple M1 and M2, and uh, you can also deploy it on servers that may be using the newer uh, ARM, ARM chips. So that's been really nice. Uh, we've added, uh, uh, I, uh, <laughs> we wanted to add this just because we could say it. Open Draw Map <laughs> is now a machine learning program. <laughs> we have machine learning in Open Draw Map, and it's very advanced. No, <laughs> no. We found a use case for AI, uh, and it uh, works uh, fairly well. Uh, if you have uh, taken pictures of the sky because you're taking uh, horizontal pictures of a facade, uh, that is often the case for inspections of various uh, structures. And the uh, sky is in your background. You will often get uh, various outliers in your reconstructions. Uh, you can now turn on a flag, and we will use uh, a AI model to create a mask for you, so you don't have to, uh, which is really nice, and it works. Uh, we also have an option to restrict uh, uh, the boundaries of your reconstruction uh, so that 
say that mountain over there that you see on the screen doesn't get reconstructed and leaves your building looking very tiny. Uh, it will uh, automatically create a reasonable bound uh, for your reconstruction. Uh, we finally implemented uh, uh, a much asked feature, which is rolling shutter correction. Uh, this has been on our uh, <laughs> feature requests list since uh, 2016, I believe. Uh, <laughs> so it took, a <laughs> it took a while, but we got there. Uh, rolling shutter is very useful if you have a drone that has a rolling shutter camera and you are taking the pictures while you're moving the drone, which is often what you want to do because you can capture your photos more quickly. Uh, hovering and taking pictures takes a while, so this was very, very helpful. Uh, you can now turn on a flag, uh, rolling shutter, uh, and uh, ODM will increase the accuracy of your rolling shutter reconstructions uh, automatically. Uh, we do need to know uh, from Open Drone Map what is the sensor readout time of your camera, and we have a crowdsourced uh, database that gives us the values for dozens of cameras already. Uh, if you do not have that value for your camera in the database, we also provide instructions on how to build a simple Arduino device that will let you figure out what your sensor readout time is. It's a very fun weekend project. You can do it with your kids. Uh, they'll love it. <laughs> and uh, you get to contribute to Open Drone Map. So, uh, Definitely check out uh, the uh, RS calibration uh, repo uh, if uh, your camera is not in our database. And together we'll build the best rolling shutter database. <laughs> Uh, now, I want to quickly uh, mention that uh, uh, Open Drone Map uh, has been able to uh, make great technological advancements, uh, even with uh, a much more uh, limited set of resources compared to uh, other companies. And uh, I wanted to uh, say that this is possible because of our modular nature and our ties with other open source projects. So even though Open Drone Map, the people that work in Open Drone Map to put all these pieces together, uh, maybe a small team, the people that contribute to the overall software is quite large. And <laughs> as I started to making this list, I ran out of space. And uh, I'm sorry if uh, I'm, we're using one of your packages and your name is not here. Uh, this is mostly a list uh, that came from memory. But it involves uh, many people that have contributed many modules that have ended up in, uh, in, in Open Drone Map. So it's really uh, a global effort. Um, I want to quickly touch on uh, how we uh, approach uh, uh, contributions. Uh, as a project, we're very welcoming of uh, uh, help from the outside and uh, to contributions. Uh, we actually have a uh, mantra to uh, put place uh, people before uh, uh, code. Uh, that means that we're not particularly picky about whether you're going to use uh, tabs or spaces. Uh, <laughs> or uh, whether uh, you know, a particular function is not implemented uh, uh, according to how we would really like to see it. Uh, in general, we follow a simple flowchart. Uh, does it break? No? Accept it. But? No but. <laughs> you can always make changes later if needed. Uh, if it does break, uh, yes, we will ask you to uh, try to fix it, but we'll help you along with the way. Uh, so our approach has been mostly to merge pull requests quickly. Uh, we believe that this encourages uh, people to contribute more. Uh, and uh, yeah, and we try not to ask for too many changes uh, unless it's broken or it's uh, completely out of scope. Like don't put uh, email in Open Drama. We will not merge it. Uh, <laughs> all of this uh, takes uh, quite a bit of effort, uh, but uh, we believe it's worth it. Uh, because uh, we think uh, the people are really uh, the soul of the software. Uh, code comes second. Uh, I want to have, a, we have a, a one final surprise uh, that uh, has been uh, years in the making. <laughs> and so I'm going to leave uh, the final few minutes of the presentation to uh, Stephen Matter. He is the co-founder of Open Drum Up. He's been uh, the one that started the project. So uh, let me introduce Steve. <laughs> so I, I feel like the luckiest person in the room. Um, is Michelle Tobias in the room? Michelle is user number one. And so I presented at uh, Phosphor G in Portland some half idea of a project. And afterwards, <laughs> uh, they dragged me into the hallway and said, oh, we got to this step. What's the next step? Uh, so beyond that, we had uh, DK Benjamin uh, manage it for a while. We had Piero show up. We have Luca. We have that long list. Actually, Piero doesn't know this, but I, I started to generate, uh, based on the GitHub repos, the, the full list of, like, a scrolling list of everyone, and I gave up. 
Um, I could do it for some of the projects, but for, particularly for Google, Poodle, Leaflet, it was just hopeless. It was thousands of contributors. So really, this is, uh, this is a larger community effort. And uh, what we want to do within the con what we want to do within the context of Open Drum Map specifically is continue to resource uh, the community outreach and the, and the support of the community uh, through, uh, through dedicated support. So more information to come, uh, but an org is incorporated. Uh, the board is in formation. Uh, the application for 501c3 status is, you know, will take three years and, and be a nightmare. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to be uh, doing more work and more dedicated and focused work uh, in this space that complements uh, the, the rest of the orgs in the space that are also doing fantastic stuff. So TBD, more to come, and we'll talk about, I think at future ones, we'll talk about economic models and, and ways, to, ways to do this. And I think uh, this aligns with what, things that other projects are currently either already implementing or beginning to implement uh, in their space. So, excellent. <laughs> Thank you so much, Steve. All right, uh, that is it. So, uh, thank you so much for uh, attending. Uh, uh, do we have a few minutes for questions? Oh, of course, yes. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Questions.